frogs. Docking reserve for residents of Ruta Sangaline 33A. So that would imply she lives here or near here. Your room in the whirling isn't much bigger than this sloop. It's worth more than you ever earned in your entire life. Oh, to be an orca and just shatter this thing. A striking woman leans against the cabin top of her sailing boat, smiling as you approach. Her green raincoat glistens with droplets. A silk scarf is tied around her throat. Mom, do, can I tighten that for you? Good afternoon, officers. To a terminal Good end. Alright. Joyce L. Messier. I represent the board of Wild Pines, the owners of the harbor. You gentlemen must be from the RCM. Alright. What gave us away? Nothing, honestly. I've said it to every drunk in town, and you're the first one who's responded. Okay, she is funny. Relax. She meant it in jest. All right, um, serving a little cunt. All right, um, what does the L stand for? My maiden name. Her bony hand dangles from the sleeve of her oversized raincoat. All right, we're not gonna shake her hand. I'm glad to see you here. The woman and lieutenant exchange a brief handshake. I was dispatched to handle a strike, not a lynching. Anything I can do to assist the RCM in this matter, I will gladly. I'm sure you will. That is good to hear, Madame. My colleague will take the lead on this interview. Oh no. I should let you know that he is recovering from an unusual medical episode. Very unusual. But I can assure you of his ultimate competency. Thank you for bullshitting on my behalf. A trace of irony in his voice. Mischief even. This is a tactic. It happens quicker than a shooting star. But did the lieutenant just wink at you? How interesting. I guess. I wish you a swift recovery. In the meanwhile, you have my full cooperation, and the full cooperation of the Wild Pines group. I feel like starting with you on a boat would be a, a good way to maybe get, throw her off a little bit. Why, yes, You're on a boat. She looks at the deck under her feet, green and white sails flutter overhead. Does she have a name? The boat? No. It is called Cordelati. 19 because so she has no soul it is okay but what kind of boat is it's it a pleasure craft a 19 pacer it also happens to be rated for category one racing though these days i mainly use it for business how do you like that boat i like it a lot it's the eels hips baby i'm stealing I'm that in this part of the interview it has so little to do with the murder we're investigating kim live a little not a lot of people on boats, are there? We're on an archipelago. How else are you supposed to get around? Uh, wait, we're on an archipelago? Yes, we are. We are on Le Caillou. Technically, the neighboring Ozone and Fas Alamer island groups are archipelagos. Thank you, Encyclopedia, because I absolutely would have pointed this out. Landmass, the fourth largest island in the world. It is not an archipelago. All right. Wait, I thought Lake Caillou was one big island. Okay, if you want to get technical. The point is, we're all on islands here, and sail is still the most expedient way to get from one island to another. Especially when you're in a hurry to resolve a strike. Still, I haven't seen anyone else sail a boat around here. I haven't seen anyone else drive a souped-up Coupri Kenema motor carriage either. Didn't we hear one earlier? Actually, that motor carriage has been specially issued to serve as a patrol and pursuit vehicle. It's for crossing long distances. In I love that he's joining my technical Tim party here. Neither is this. A toy, I mean. It's a machine for crossing long distances in the Bay of Revachol, between the city and the islands. Anything can be a toy if you're not a coward. You need to make this lady admit she's only riding around on this boat because she's rich. I absolutely do. You have the guns and the ammo. Take this class and fiend. Damn. Right. Let's talk about the economics of this boat you're on. Oh my, the E word. You mean to say that it's a symbol of conspicuous consumption? That I'm a member of the ruling class? Precisa mundo, class wartime, baby. May I remind you that Mrs. Messier is a professional negotiator. He doesn't look like he thinks you're, you're best in single then combat. What does that say? 
Does it say docking reserved for residents of Rue de saint gis Lane, 33A? 33A? This old proletarian haunt here? As I said, plenty of people drive boats of all social strata. All right. Uh, a little over half, but we're going to go for it. Your synapses. Yo! That's my car. We're coming back from all the botch rolls earlier. Um... What do we got? Doesn't seem to be much space left for this 19 pace sloop dock yeah, here. That's the stuff. Good thing everyone else has tiny skiffs. I assure you, they drove quite the hard bargain for this space. But you're right. I am a bourgeois woman, and this is my long, incredibly lightweight, interminably bourgeois boat. Alright. I think I have a hand on the boat thing. I don't care about the license. Okay. I seem to have pissed her off. Uh huh. All right. Tell me about Wild Pines. What do you do? We do. I'm afraid I don't speak for Wild Pines as a whole. It is a giant undertaking. Oh. There was a touch of discomfort there. She wants to. Oh, I see. But her thoughts and opinions are, do not necessarily reflect those of Wild Pines writ large. So what do they do? core competency is logistics container shipping freight that or she thinks that she's too good for Those container shipping there, linking those are the shipping side of things all right and that is the terminal another subdivision deals with energy oil and gas exploration yeah it's a megacorp platforms that's a zaibatsu wild pines group is one of the original revisholian indo tribes Companies awarded royal monopolies by the king, the suzerain himself, centuries ago. The king is long gone, but several of the Indo tribes remain. So literally appointed oligarchs. Who are the other Indo tribes? L-U-M, an unknown entity known... Loam, like Arce Yatsura? All right. Um, you're in good company, it seems. She does not register the real meaning of the remark. Uh, how much money they got? I'm not at liberty to discuss the company balance sheet, but I can tell you that last year the company booked more than twenty billion real in revenue. All right. Numbers like that mean nothing to me. Yes, past a certain point, numbers begin to seem imaginary, but they are quite real for the seventy-two thousand employees who depend on Wild Pines for their paychecks. A conglomerate the size of Wild Pines is like a shark. If it stops moving... Oh, yep, yeah, there's the demon of capitalism right there. ...the comes of those 72,000 families. It is a tremendous responsibility. They become provided by for... They become provided for by their friends and neighbors. I'm just throwing that out there. They start Where do they get all them billions? ...exploration and cargo fleet conducting trade between the Samaran... Oh! Oh, no real-world historical parallels there. When pine ships explored the South Seminese and charted Lormantang on behalf of the suzerain. Oh yeah, absolutely, Thatcher. Especially the, like the look too. Centuries of care, deliberation, and madness have gone into this endeavor. Vessels pass through the great unrest to re-emerge with apricots in tow. The logic of the system is totalizing. It's taken everything from its employees to build it. That doesn't sound as good as you think it does. All right. Um, probably helps to start out with the Royal Monopoly. Damn right I do. But most of the original Indo tribes. I took the know-it-all archetype. Let's go. To survive, Wild Pines had to grow and adapt. No suzerain did that. All right. What does a huge citizen want with a place like this? You mean aside from being the terminal's legal owners? Who are responsible for moving 8% of the world's cargo. You don't keep it working. Or moving the workers do. Cody's nothing without them. We built this district. I sincerely doubt that. There it is. She owns up to it. Alright, and we just got an achievement for being the biggest communist builder. All the best <laughs> We're only like, second session in. With its bastions. The plazas, meteor and mosaic. Even some of the old street lamps. Oh yeah, Julian Anderson is Thatcher uh, on the crown. That that was that was a cruel joke to everyone. 
All right. She points behind you where the seawall rises. Before Martinez was swallowed by the industrial harbor, even before it was part of Revachol, long before Terminal B was erected here, the Pines built it as a resort for its Revacholian employees. Gross. A company getaway for a weekend or a summer holiday. Then came the revolution. Good. Well, that's another matter. I'm here to make sure the Pines can fulfill their responsibilities to the place they built. All right. What can you tell me about this strike? Everything. Right up to, but not including, trade secrets. Uh, what if I want to hear trade First, secrets? You'd have to repeal the Emergencies Act of Trade and Elements. That gives me the right to silence. It's quite the octopus. How do I repeal it, then? Why? By throwing off half a century of foreign domination under the Coalition. Unfortunately for you, the Coalition also leases you the right to police West Revachol. Oh no, I might lose my job. Shooting yourself in the foot, in other words. Fair enough. But I that would probably end the game, though. You wanted to know about the strike. Okay, what's your role in this? I believe the official title is Senior Labor Negotiator. In practice, I'm a grocery clerk. I relay the union's demands to Wild Pines and return with Wild Pines' counteroffer. More of a courier than a clerk, but okay. How are the talks going? They're not. That's the problem. The union stopped all negotiations a week ago, after that awful lynching took place. Okay. Wait. She just admitted that the lynching and the strike are connected. Okay. That's a now point in our investigation corner. The There's a 2 meter 20 racist behemoth blocking the gates. Alright, tell me about the big racist guy. The union employs a giant covered in tattoos. A racist giant. I guess that's part of their big tent organization now. Alright, so the strike is connected to the lynching? Yes, I believe there is a connection. But that's a subject for later. Her eyes narrow. Okay. How were the talks going before the lynching? Let's say I was not making the kind of progress I'd hoped for when I first arrived. Okay. And when did you first arrive? I arrived three weeks ago. Yes. And presumably the lynching took place the one week still ago. Frozen, then. I prefer to do these things on site, like the RCM. Don't try to engage in sympathy with me. The strike began in December. He looks at his notes. I wasn't the original negotiator here. I took over after Mr. Gaumont hit a wall with Mr. Clare, the union boss. Ah. Mr. Clare refused to speak with Gaumont despite concessions he granted the union in prior negotiations. This isn't the first time the union has gone on strike. I mean, they're a union. Uh, hopefully they are militant. There have been two prior strikes. Both times, the union won significant concessions, including overtime pay and a medical plan. This time, their demands are more, I guess you could say, aggressive. Oh, I can't wait to hear how basic needs these are. Because even, it's meant. What are their demands? There are leaflets everywhere, and banners. What did they say again? Oh, yes. Every worker, a member of the board. That... Sounds pretty proper. Most of the workers probably don't know what that means. That's just mean, dude. Um, I like it. Then you might also like their other slogan. Demand democracy. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. Personally, I don't think it has the same pizzazzo as every worker, a member of the board. All right. What exactly do they mean by it? What's the demand? It's quite simple, you see. Every time the Wild Pines group makes a decision about what, about anything really, it needs the signature of each of the 2,200 workers in its Martinez terminal. That's fine. Just so you understand, this is but one of 22 terminals. You can hire a few more bureaucrats that can collect the signatures. Everybody wins. They are kings of the company. They are also kings of the 72,000 employees of Wild Pines group. All right. King is dead, long live the workers. That may well be. It's not up to me to decide who is king, but as negotiations go, it's not a swell start. What are you gonna do about it? I'm not sure. Naturally, I assume that was just their opening position, a hard-nosed tactic with a side of mockery. But there's been no follow-up, just the same nonsensical slogan repeated over and over again. Well, your scabs were also repeating nonsensical slogans, so I guess we're at an impasse. People are getting lynched, I hear. 
behind the whirling in rags. A disastrous situation if there ever was one. Excuse me, from whom did you hear about this lynching? I first heard it from the boyer at the gates. The one whose very name advertises his aversion to work. Her reply comes quick. He said it that was could be rehearsed then. Ah, uh, yeah, we talked to him earlier. He was cool. This checks out. Okay. Uh, what happened to this Gaumont? Mr. Clare told him to... How did he put it? Go fuck himself? Fuck off, midget. Gaumont is short of stature, you see. Well, that's kind of ableist. Okay, then. Yes. Keep in mind... This is a negotiator Mr. Clare has worked with before, and who was more than fair with him and the Union. Alright, uh, scabs at the gate. Actually, let's follow up on Clare. Everett Clare is a man of the utmost integrity. That's the guy that the uh, one guy playing, uh, it's that he always puts I'm sorry, I forgot the name of the ball game. First. Legally distinct bocce. Um. Of course not. Everard is fantastically corrupt. I imagine he has. I mean, if it's a corrupt union, we'll, we'll get it shut down. But yeah. Ah. Uh. If you were to prick it with something sharp, you could see it oozing out. A knife, maybe. No, a rapier. All right. Is he that bad? He's the most corrupt individual I have ever seen, and I deal with men like him for a living. If there is anyone more venal, more irredeemably nepotistic. Then it's his twin brother, Edgar. Wait, there are two of him? Yes. Edgar looks exactly like his brother, except for that lazy eye. He also talks exactly like Everard does. And when one's term as foreman is up, the other takes over. So they're just handing it back and forth. It's how they circumvent the term limits. Ah, see, with called a funny it. little switcheroo. While in office, they've embezzled God knows how much of their workers' dues. Well, if they're not... If they're not Properly allocating those dues. Yeah, we're gonna have to have a little talk. Um, what about the union itself outside the Brothers Clare? The Clare's union was once a perfectly normal institution. Twenty years ago, anyway. It must not have been easy to establish under the Emergency Act, but they did it. I can respect that. Okay, she's not complete garbage. Just mostly. Best, as they say. Then something happened in the local chapter elections. The Brothers Clare came and transformed it into a. How do you say? She hesitates, looking for the right expression. The debardeurs are a crime syndicate. Sad as it may be, I suspect we'll be forced to cooperate with them. Refreshingly honest, officer. The company has tried appeasing in the past, but I'm afraid our concessions have only emboldened Everard and his brother. She turns to you. And your opinion, detective. Me, you. If I may ask. I'm a curious and talkative person, you see. Would you say the Debardeurs Union is... Uh, an effective advocate for the rights of local working men. Why do you think so? Alright, uh... They're good labor men, can't fault them for a little corruption. A real man of the left. What else can I tell you about? Uh, the scabs of the gate, did you put them there? The you mean the huddled masses of jam rats? Honestly, I can fault them for a little corruption, but anyway. Um. Don't let her answer it herself. No, I mean scabs. If these workers were organized by Wild Pines or its affiliates, then it would be a company secret. I could not share it with you. Not yet, at least. Yeah, okay, it's, it's, they absolutely did. That's implied. She's open to discussing this matter with you at a later occasion. Interesting. So, yeah, again, she might not be complete garbage. All right. You said something happened in the elections? I'm glad you asked. There was a woman, the previous forewoman of the union. Oh! She disappeared. And there was also that lighter pair of boots. Disappeared? Yes. So it could have been a woman of smaller stature. The local chapter elections... Her daughter phoned in and said she wasn't running anymore, or coming to work, ever. End of story. Oh? This fool woman, her name? Who that? Sadly, the company records do not even give a name. She's just fool woman, in private correspondence, Holly. 
I don't even know if it's a sir or given name. All right, well, that's going to be a question to ask some people. All right. Eerie. Downright haunting, if you ask me. The Wild Pines suspected foul play, but what could they do? It was a union matter. The point of the presentation is, these kinds of things happen around the Clares. Watch out when you're dealing with him. I will. Thank you for your concern, ma'am. We'll be just fine. That would be all I need here. Let's of change course. the topic. How else can I help? What can you tell me about this lynching? Quite a few things, I'm afraid. She falls silent for a moment, contemplating something. The information I'm to share with you includes sensitive trade secrets. For the sake of my employer, I have to ask for your names and badge numbers. Okay. Of course, ma'am. I didn't realize it was a secret task, but okay. I am Lieutenant Kitsuragi from Prison 57. And this is my colleague from Precinct 41. I'm afraid he doesn't have his badge at the moment. I hope mine will suffice. How curious. Why is that, Detective? Remember when my partner told you I'd recently suffered from an unusual medical episode? Uh, my lost badge is related to it. I see. So, are you saying you lost your badge during the course of this episode? Alright, um... Uh, yeah. I can't hear you, darling. Speak up, please. I could have eaten it for all I know. I don't remember anything. This world, the city, nothing. Oh, dear. She sighs with confusion, sadness Some even. Some kind of encephalopathic amnesia. I don't even know how to respond. We may have actually won her pity. I do believe you, naive as that may sound. I simply can't imagine what you gain by faking such a condition. Thanks, buddy. As I said, ma'am, his technique may be very unconventional. But he is an officer of the RCM. Of course, I sympathize. But I'm afraid I simply can't share anything more until I've seen that badge. Right. She's a professional negotiator. She should be open to some sort of mutually beneficial arrangement. Uh, I'll find it somehow. Let's talk about something else until I do. But before we do, officers, let me be perfectly clear. The situation is extremely volatile. The sooner we can speak about this lynching business, the better for all of us. All right, thank you. Of course, detective. Take care. All right, so we got to come back to her at some point. I'll skim for some more bottles with the terror machine. Now, uh, yeah, then we'll probably call it. That was, that was a nice fat info dump to end the night. Oh, let me check that. Hello? Uh, okay, it's the lock not uh, staying locked. Okay, let me at least sweep the areas we've been before. This Postla Vantorie mail collection box has been heavily vandalized with graffito. A closer inspection. Graffiti is plural, graffito is the singular. Alright, two bullet holes. The sticker on the side reads RCM Emergencies Desk Number 8102. Good mail delivery box. Mankind, be vigilant. Good mail delivery box. The box seems happy. Each ship You're welcome. Fucked by the coon. And <laughs> G That's Kuno. And, and Kuno S. Jenny is a whore and best set mailbox also. Uh, been there. Mail collection box, the mail been there. Collection box seems cathartic. Thankful even. So do you. You shudder. Then you swallow. See ya. Okay, we checked that trash can. I don't think there was anything sitting around here that we could grab, unless it was near the dumpster. Actually, it looks like there might be something near the dumpster. Oh, we noticed that before, but okay. Not gonna bother with Kuno for now. We already looked at the body. Again, I wanna see how much chump change this pile gets us, and then... I want those shoes. The hell with the itchy pants, we're getting the shoes. Did we ever 
actually take a look at the blue car? That, that's the police one, right? Before you stands a motor carriage. The bodywork is covered in blue and white. That's bearing the number. Kim's number, I think. This must be the infernal machine that toy from oblivion. The Caprice Kinema motor carriage. Open the, the door. Cabin, you are welcomed by a set of steering levers, a radio microphone on a hook, a pull-out toolbox. Oh, that's right. We had to call in about the badge too. The glow of the fuel preheater gauge. Okay. A scent of leather work and heavy fuel oils washes over you. Alright, let's get this call in first. Lights up, and a green button labeled Prime Line glows like a feline eye. And then you hear something. Yo. The soft purr of electrical kittens. Radio waves cast far and wide over the metropolis. A woman's voice greets you through the static. The writing's fucking beautiful. Hello, Lieutenant. How may I assist you? Hello, Alice. Please assist our colleague from the 41st prison here. I'm putting him on. Okay. Operating the radio is easy. Just be confident. You've probably done it a thousand times. All right, come in dispatch. Officer Alice Dimitri, Precinct 57. How may I assist you? You can swear she was friendlier with Lieutenant. Under the green prime line, a yellow saved button catches your eye. You wonder what the lieutenant's default radio station is. Huh. All right. Oh, I'm not going to press the button now. All right. Could, could you connect me to the 41st precinct? I have something you need to report. Uh, she puts you on hold, the static crackling softly like a bonfire. After a while, you hear an old man greet you from the radio. His rightly up voice is oddly familiar. 10 to 10 this is 41st. Come in. Over. The man uses relay code. You've got this. You're a cop, and cops know relay code. I guess. All right, 10-4, station 41. I've got an urgent business. Over. 10-4, message received. 10-5, relay message. What's your status? Over. He would not actually be saying that. Uh, I think the narrator should have said that for that. But anyway, just reporting in. Over. 10-18, state your message, sir. Uh, hope. I need to report my badge missing. Uh, my badge. I can't find it anywhere. Basically, it's gone. Message received. This is a very serious situation. I need to 1022 the captain. Over. Is it him? What does he want? Somebody's thrilled to hear I'm here. Says he lost his badge and needs to report it. He what? He lost his badge? I'm gonna say nothing. He lost his badge? Fuck off, Chester. Dick fucking Mullen. Who do you think? It's Officer Dick Mullen from the bestseller Dick Mullen and the Lost Identity. I hate Dick both of these people. It's not your name. It's the name of a fictional detective who would not lose his badge. You defend yourself immediately. They're laughing at you. Haha, uh -huh, officer lost his badge, haha, uh -huh, like I'm the first cop to ever misplace his badge. He says, this has probably happened to other policemen before him, and laughs uh, sarcastically. I love how he translated oh, that for God them. Damn it. Is he fucking kidding? The whole station's gonna be dicked for this. Satellite officer Vicmar is wondering if you might be joking, and adds that this tarnishes the reputation of the entire station. Over. Mullen dicked us! Alright, can't we just move on? I want to get a report to be done with. 10-4, I hear you, officer. I'm just going to make a note here that you are in pursuit. And we got a skill point for it, okay? I'm glad we kept going. Fuck me! Mac, come here! You've got to hear this! Dick Mullen lost his badge! Well, What's that's gonna get on? spread around. Supercop here lost his badge. He lost his what now? His badge. He lost his goddamn fucking badge. You don't please stop saying he lost his badge for a moment. Yes, you two please stop saying he lost his badge. Why? Did he find it? <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Sergeant Person was wondering if you found your badge yet. Over. Um, you this guy's a consummate professional. It's hard to think like this. He's not replying. Looks like he's still looking for it. Oh, he's good. All right. Um, enough of this now. I have other things to discuss. 10-9, come again. I didn't get that. Over. The animated conversation in the back is making it difficult for him to hear you. New heights even for Captain Sober. Okay, now that's definitely a sarcastic nickname. 
Ask him if he's lost his gun too. No comment. Sergeant Orson wants to know if you lost your gun too. Over. Check your pockets. Check your. Holy fuck! You don't know where it is, do you? I don't my gun. It's gone. It's not fucking on you. That's bad. Officer, did you get my question? We were wondering about your gun. Over. I do have decent drama, we'll go for it. Even before you Fuck. get the words out, everything gets scrambled in your brain. No, of course I didn't lose my fun. Gun. Fuck it, I didn't lose my gun. He didn't lose his gun. Or his fun, whatever that means. Ask him to describe it. His gun. Not his fun. Just the gun will do. <laughs> Satellite officer McLean requests a description of your weapon. Over. Uh. Kim, what are you packing? It's a single shot kill A9. An armistice to be precise. It's, I'm probably not packing the same one. It's a single shot ki kill A9. Over. It's a kill uh, 9mm armistice. Armistice? What? Is he a fucking. Clearly, he doesn't have his villier anymore. Rip. God, he lost his gun? Oh, oh my, I can't. <laughs> this isn't really a laughing matter. Mac can face a giant of Coco Nur by himself, but this go here, I him piss his pants. <laughs> oh, I, I can't. Fuck. He lost his ass. <laughs> he still got his wiener. <laughs> Do I still have my wiener? Ask him. <sighs> I feel kind of bad for this guy, honestly. There we go. I left it at his mom as after I fucked her ass all night. Tell him that. <laughs> I tried. He, uh, he said he sodomized your mother. The prick ate mama's vanilla waffles at the captain's birthday party. Some nerve he's got. <laughs> Sure, vanilla waffles were the only thing he ate? At least Chester's capitalizing. Shut up, Chester. This isn't funny. This is my mom we're talking about. Tell him to apologize right now. Yo, you started this shit. Sergeant Orson requests that you apologize for the claims that you made about his mother. Over. Hey, if you don't like the fall, they don't fuck with the Firewalker. He says uh, you shouldn't have antagonized the Firewalker in the first place. Why am I called the Firewalker? Hmm? Uh, the disbelief in Vic Mars' voice is overwhelming. Firewalker. Um, I'm afraid he might be referring to himself as Firewater, sir. You son of a bitch, you betrayed me. Firewater? He's lost it. Fuck it, tell him to find his goddamn badge and gun. That's the only thing that matters. Okay. Satellite officer Vic... Uh, I heard him. I don't want it. Then for affirmative, officer in pursuit of his firearm. They're static. Oh, God, I... <laughs> Man, it's fighting back tears. Further assistance. Over. Uh, all right. Transmission complete is standing by. Over. Roger that. Ten, ten. Over and out. Static ends with a loud click and everything is silent in the cabin. All right. This is Precinct 57. How may I assist you? I don't recall a Sylvie yet, so... Oh, wait, no, that's right. There was the call. Uh, I need to get him to Oh, we'll try it. Of course. What is your number, officer? Uh, Kim, didn't Guard give you Sylvie's number? Yes. Hold on. Her number is 005-1944-298. Okay. Received. Hold on, officer. Start slapping a marching rhythm on your thighs. She might be busy at the moment. Takes a bit to get to the phone. Officer, I have Sylvie Malaika on the line for you. All right. Hello? A female voice greets you through static. It sounds like she's a million miles away from here. Um. We haven't met before. I don't know why I even pulled that one. All right. Hello, this is the police calling. I have some questions about your last days of work. All right. Hello, officer. What can I do for you? Uh, you quit your job with the whirling. Why? You mean, why did I leave the bar? You can hear her tense up on the other side. I'm not really comfortable discussing it with you, sir. That's fair. Why not? Uh, okay. I won't push you on this. Why are you ever coming back to work? 
Maybe, I don't know. She seems to relax a little bit. I have to take some time off right now. I'd rather keep her good graces to maybe get a little more information that way. Uh, was it you who called the police? No, not me. Okay. Do you know who made that call? No, sorry. I don't. <clears throat> not a lot of people have phones around here. Copper thieves take the wires. Aww. People don't have the money to have the cables put in again. They use the Union's phone, or the one on the coast. Okay. So the Union has a phone, and there's one further down the coast. Got it. Gotcha. To someone else. We'll find them. So was it a snitch in the Union? It just might take a while. Okay. Next question. Yeah, go on. Why would she have seen my badge or my gun? I guess we'll ask. Yes, I know who you are. You're a police officer. The law. Oh. This exact conversation has happened before. Establishing authority before this young girl seems to have been important to you in the past. Don't go there again. All right, let's not go there. My oh. badge is missing. No, I haven't. Sorry. Okay. Your police will have uniforms too, by the way. Where's yours? He doesn't have a uniform and he looks real to me. In plain clothes, voluntarily. It's different from not knowing where your uniform is. Whatever, I look good. Alright, have you seen my gun? No, we... No. I lost my uniform. Uniform? I, I never saw you in any uniform. You had your things on. The disco things. Fair enough. All right, have you seen my gun? Please? No, not this again. Everyone saw your cool gun, detective. Uh-oh. When did that happen? I'm trying to impress some people with it. Everyone was eating and... Uh, actually, I don't want to know. I don't want to know what happened. Right. Anything else? So, all right. I definitely whipped it out of the bar like a jackass. I do hope... The gun. That. Please, don't call me again. Bye. I'm gonna go for it. Yes. Yo! That's two low checks that we got. When she was still working there. Alright. Wait, before you go, you're mad at me, right? Tell me, what did I do? I can't remember anything. I'm not mad, it's just... You were so drunk and so emotional all the time, and then the skua thing happened. It just made me want to quit. What skua thing? The bird. The great skua. Oh, that's why the bartender was pissed at, or the 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 kitchen manager was uh, mad at me for while he was working on it. All right. I think you said it had been giving you shit ever since you got there. All right. Yeah, that sounds like me. All right. Seem like you had fun doing it, though. That's fair. All right. Um, so you're telling me that I was the one that made you want to quit? Obviously. You were the worst client I've ever seen. And I have seen so many assholes in this place. Oh. I've had sailors fighting, union guys grabbing my ass, kids stealing booze. Once a guy was glued to the karaoke machine every night for two months. I'm so sorry. Go on, I wanna know what I did. Well, you were worse than all of them. Honestly, you were getting borderline aggressive. I threw a bird at the wall. I think it's a bit beyond borderline turning down the volume at 3 a.m. I even liked one of those songs you kept listening to on repeat. No more. I I hate it now. Uh, which one? We Go On by the OO. I can't listen to it anymore. You've turned it into... Maybe this was why the the woman down the hall was like, we don't talk about OO either. All right. Sorry. The hell with that song. Then there was your room. Your project. An experiment to see how bad it can get in there. It wasn't that bad. Oh, okay, that's pretty bad. Cleaner, but you wouldn't let me. Threatened to make me understand. I had no idea what you... Yeah, I don't understand where you go with that. And then you scream something about being the most boring person alive and how everyone leaves you because you're just so boring. I'm sorry. And then I had to deal with... <laughs> it doesn't end. I love this. Documents ...causing water damage downstairs in the kitchen... <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, fuck. 
your gun around, harassing customers, threatening to sing karaoke, threatening to kill yourself. All right, police documents. I, oh, the ones I had to rent out of your toilet. Where are those? I, damn it, I don't remember what I did to your damn papers. I don't remember every little thing I do. Resentment gives way to concern in her voice. Especially when there's a hurricane loose. It's your fault for losing them, not mine. She's not wrong. Something in you wants to immediately forget about this, as if there was a reason you threw them away. All right, I get it. I wasn't a very good tenant. No, you really weren't. You were simply the worst. All right. I'm truly sorry for everything, everything, Sylvie. God, I, I knew I shouldn't have brought it up. Just try not to call me again, and let's pretend it never happened. All right. What else did I sing besides the O? Oh, I'm looking for a song. Oh, all sorts of things. From disco, rock to so much disco and rock. Was I singing the smallest church in Saint Saints? Yes, that's the one you like to sing along to the most. Song Saints? The later it got, the more that one came on. Fair enough. Interesting. You still have to find a copy though, before you can blast it. Alright, thank you for talking with me. Although if if I'm if I start blasting it, I'm pretty sure that's gonna re traumatize some other patrons as well. Alright. Take care. Hear a sigh of relief on the other end of the radio. Wordless, the call breaks. Then, the already familiar voice. Anything else I can help you with, officer? I don't want to call the 41st back. All right. Um. Curious about the saved. As always, it's DJ Mesh and Felicio, and you're listening to Felicio. FM, bringing you the hottest, the nastiest, the most vulgar. A flock of seagulls takes off nearby, startled by the roaring radio. Right away, the lieutenant reaches into the cabin and turns off the radio. He's not looking at you as he says, Someone must have been messing with the radio or maybe picked up a random frequency. You wanted the prime line, right? Speed Freaks FM, huh? Oh, uh, is that what it was called? Kim likes the party after all. Turn the radio back on while it's still on the Speed Freaks FM. Right, you don't want to get into this, no problem. Nothing to get into, really. But sure, uh, let's focus on the important things. He passed the motor carriage. This is Precinct 57. Can I connect you to someone? I'm done. 57, over and out. Bye bye. In the cabin, you see a set of steering levers, a radio on a hook, a pull out toolbox, and the soft glow of the fuel preheater gauge. Let's look at the toolbox. The metallic drawer slides out from under the seat and clicks into place. The tools inside are neatly organized. Of course they are. What you need, officer. It's going to be a long case. I'm not protective of my tools like some men are. We stand a bastion of positive mas masculinity. He's clearly a little protective of his tools. But what can you do? All right. His work. The we'll will take everything. Nice we got cool a pry bar. And heavier than you'd think. Useful for opening all sorts of doors and lids. All right, let's get some the chain cutters. Are long and sleek. Snap, snap, go the cutters in your hand. You can do good work with these. Cut chains, locks, and ropes, especially belts. All right, and one flashlight. Robust, weatherproof, and well-made. And the hand cranked means we don't have to look for uh, batteries. Let's you see things in the dark you would otherwise miss. All right, we'll, we'll shut that. Box slides back into its nest. Preheater gauge casts a warm glow on the steering levers. All right, let's the jerk off the car. The white suede feels luxurious under the touch. And the metal clutch handle so very familiar in your palm. I don't know if I remember how to drive, so I don't think we should uh, allow me to do that yet. Uh, as you tap on, tap the, gauge, on the, gauge. the indicator pin jerks as if startled. It's in the large orange sector, indicating the engine is warm. Next to the gauge is a red switch labeled heat. There's no use pressing the heat button. It won't start without the ignition key. Fair enough. Translation. We're not going anywhere right now. All right. Well, we've got some tools now. All right. Any other uh, bottles and cans to grab? Yes. Oh, what was that? Son, 
You've really let yourself go. It's a disgrace. But Coach Physical Instrument is going to get you back in prime condition, even if it takes a million push-ups. All right. That doesn't mean you're calling me a magnet and Nancy boy to motivate me. Does a master swordsman insult his own blade? No. I'm going to turn you into an athletic benchmark, you big pussy. Yes, sir. Forge me into organic steel, coach. It's going to take blood, sweat, piss, and tears. But when I'm done with you, boy, you will be a master athlete. Wait, why piss? When a man sets his mind and body on something and gives his 110%, he is sometimes going to piss himself. It just happens. No shame in that. If you say so. Behold, world. Here walks a sportsman, hands choked and hair kept back with a bandana. The homo athleticus. We're going to be communist and swole. Let's do it. All right, yeah. Let's really check down here for bottles, yeah. We've got like five minutes before the ad, so we'll probably just kill the stream right beforehand. Oh, what is this? back. I didn't see that earlier. We'll check the door later too. I'll have to remember that. Alright, tear machine real quick and then uh, I'll find someone to raid. I can just snooze the... Uh, Okay, next to the bottom of the post, I thought it was another bottle. Kind of wiggling up. It's like, I thought there was a little more trash around. Oh, I totally missed that magnesium. Door, please. Thank you. All right, tear machine, let's go. The tear machine stands in the corner. A sign says, one bottle equals 10 cents. Your bottles clunk into the machine and the money appears with a satisfying jingle. You're a richer man now. All right, we're like one ninth of the way to shoes. I already talked to her earlier, so. All right, next time, uh, maybe we'll actually make some progress. Well, I know we learned a lot, so we got, we got some groundwork done here. And again, we got communism. Or at least we started doing communism, so cool.